Secretary General, Mrs. Ban, Mr. President of the General Assembly, Your Excellency, the Permanent Representative of Japan to the United Nations, Mr. Yoshikawa, Mrs. Yoshikawa, Messengers of Peace, dear Jane Godal and Michael Douglas, and Goodwill Ambassador, Herbie Hancock, Mr. Herbie Hancock, artists, performers, ladies and gentlemen. It is a great pleasure as Under Secretary General for Communications and Public Information to welcome you here in one of the most meaningful days for the United Nations, the International Day of Peace. We are gathered here today to reaffirm our commitment to save succeeding generations from the scourge of war. We are gathering here today to recommit ourselves to peace. Diplomacy is our tool. And we are gathering here today to call on those involved in the many conflicts around the world to lay down their weapons. Dialogue and partnership can achieve dignity for all. I would like, ladies and gentlemen, now to introduce the United Nations singers who will perform two songs for us. Thank you. For that, this was really heartwarming. And I would like now to introduce the Secretary General, Mr. Ban Ki moon. Your Excellency, Mr. Morens Liketoft, President of the General Assembly of the United Nations, Your Excellency Ambassador. Motohide Yoshikawa and Madame Yoshikawa, permanent representative of Japan to the United Nations, Dr. Jane Goodall, Mr. Michael Douglas, messengers of the messengers of peace, Mr. Herbie Hancock, UNESCO Goodwill Ambassador, Excellencies, dear young children, ladies and gentlemen, dear friends. This is a solemn occasion. We mark the International Day of Peace in a world torn apart by war. Even in stable democracies, people suffer from hate crimes and violence. Women are attacked just because of their gender. Poverty is another terrible injustice. Children are dying of malnutrition even in this world with so much food. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in a moment of silence in memory of those who lost, who have tragically lost their lives.
Thank you. At this somber time, we gather at the peace bell to ring in hope. We are back here after the capital, capital master plan renovation for the first time in six years. We are a small crowd here, but we are joined by thousands and thousands of people at the United Nations, officials, students, activists, activists artists, corporate CEOs, and community leaders. All of us are resolved to work for peace. Around the world, people cherish this dream in their hearts. I call on all warring parties to observe a global ceasefire. This may not happen today, but just as surely as a striking dispel makes a sound, we will continue to hammer this point and demand the peace. Today's ceremony is very significant. This is the 70th anniversary of the United Nations. Seven decades ago, the United Nations was born out of war to save others from the same devastation. For 70 years, we have proudly carried out this mission with many setbacks but still many, many lives saved. Now we ring this peace bell to express our resolve to continue until we re realize the vision of our charter to save succeeding generations from the scourge of, of war. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, let us advance together to when we can celebrate International Day of Peace with joy. Let us work together to realize peace for all, equality for all, and justice for all. Thank you very much. Thank you, Secretary General. And now I'm going to give the floor to the President of the General Assembly, Mr. Lickenthal. Excellences, uh, Mr. Secretary General, Under Secretary Gallag, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, I am honored to join you today to commemorate the International Day of Peace. Peace, of course, is a prerequisite for any sustainable development, for shared prosperity and human rights. Indeed, the desire for lasting peace was the driving force behind the birth of the United Nations 70 years ago. Yet, Despite the spread of peace across many parts of the globe, peace is still denied to all too many people in all too many places today. People trapped in senseless conflicts, people affected by terrorism and violent extremism. At the United Nations, we have a very heavy responsibility to reduce, not increase, tensions and to address the root causes of conflict and violence. And because the nature, scale, and complexity of conflict has changed substantially the last 70 years, we must adjust our thinking and seek new ways to address challenges to international peace and security. During my presidency, I will do the utmost to help to move the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development towards forward from the next week's commitment to 15 years of action. The agenda is crucial also to ending uh, ongoing conflicts and preventing the onset of new and ever more dangerous ones. I'll support member states to explore ways to strengthen the UN's role and coherence in peace and security 
including how best to respond to the various reviews on the way. We will also continue discussions mandated by the Assembly on the UN Security uh, Council reform. Having visited Hiroshima just three weeks ago and again being reminded of the horrors of nuclear warfare, I hope that member states will work together to rebuild confidence in the area of nuclear and conventional disarmament and scale back risks of unintended conflict. Let the bell of peace ring out, therefore, in praise of those leaders who choose the path of dialogue and peace over aggression and war, in solidarity with those suffering in the absence of peace, women disgracefully targeted during conflict, families who have lost their loved ones, internally displaced persons and refugees with no choice but to flee, and as, as a timely member for those with the power and responsibility to resolve conflicts. I hope that during this anniversary year, member states will find ways to bring an end to some of the world's major conflicts in Syria and the wider Middle East, in a number of African countries, and even in parts of Europe. So together, we can move closer to the divisions of the United Nations Charter. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for Mr. President, for your fine words and for ringing the bell for us. We are about to conclude this ceremony with uh, a performance of our singers and very young musicians, but I would like to make you a couple of comments. We have other events planned today to help mark the International Day of Peace. In 10 minutes from now, in conference room four, we will hold a conference on peace with the students from all over the world and with a special participation from Lebanon. And I hope many of you can join. The Japanese tea master, Sen Jensitsu, will also be honoring us with a tea ceremony that will begin approximately in half an hour. And maybe you will recall, and if not, uh, you will know that more than a thousand UN staff members gathered in the fountain of the Secretariat building last week to form an essential question. What are you doing for peace? I hope that as you leave us today, you will reflect on this, in the, on this question. Through your voices, through the voices of all of us, advocacy, the advocacy of all of us, and social media, we all, you all can be part of the call for peace. Please remember the hashtag, Peace Day. Thank you very much.